Hey guys, so I'm back. You and I, you and I right here, we're gonna have a talk. This is what we're gonna do. So, how I got into social media. Funny story. Guys, I'm, I'm warning you in advance, I am a very in-depth storyteller. It's not a good story if you leave details out, you know? How I found my career path right now. So weird, but anyway, as some of you may know, some of the OG fans, as you guys may know, I played soccer my whole life. I grew up when I was three, playing soccer, kicking balls, all that good stuff, you know? It was all I wanted to do. Like literally, the only thing I had in mind, it was plan A, I had no plan B. It was plan A, which was going professional, being a pro soccer player. That was the only thing on my mind since I was three years old, right? I just didn't find passion in like anything else I did. Soccer was the only thing that brought me joy. It came to a point where it became therapeutic for me, where just like if I was ever going through something, just go play soccer, you know? With that being said, I became quite good at it to a point where I really started to believe I could make a living out of playing soccer. My father is a high school soccer coach, but he coached me as well, like in like clubs growing up. He had like two jobs, kind of three, because he was a teacher as well, so hardworking man. My mother is a second grade teacher. I have two sisters, Haley and Tatum. I'm going through my whole life story, okay? So bear with me. Tatum is now 21, Haley is 22. That's crazy. I am 19 years old, so we're all pretty close in age, so you can imagine how that childhood was. Stop trying to act like you're all cool because you went to Starbucks. <gasps> oh my gosh, Jordan, I'm so sorry! <laughs> when I was very young, I started training with my dad's high school team. Just like, nothing too overwhelming, like where I'd like quit because it was so hard playing against guys that are 10 years older than me. It forced me to develop very, very, very quick as a soccer player. And it helped me more than anything. Throughout my whole life, kind of grew up playing soccer. Played every, pretty much every other sport in between seasons of soccer, but soccer was always the main thing. School, very important to me growing up due to the fact that my, both my parents are teachers. My freshman and sophomore year, I went to high school in Arizona. I can't tell if like this, the music's very distracting to me. I don't know if it's gonna, the mic's gonna pick it up. But like, freshman, sophomore year, high school, Arizona, right? Ironwood High School, that's where I went. My father was a coach there. He was also a high school world history teacher and criminal justice, law enforcement, that stuff. Did my first two years there, got some accolades as a freshman, sophomore in high school, playing soccer. Then junior year, I was recruited to go play for Real Salt Lake Academy in Utah, which is a development academy, DA. If you don't know soccer, it's kind of like, is the professional soccer division in the US. MLS, Major League Soccer, that's those are the main pro teams in soccer. It's like the NBA, but MLS for soccer. Almost every MLS team has a youth team, which is called the Academy, which is what I went to. And people, people at my old school, I was like, yeah, I'm going to Utah next year to play. Like, I'm gonna miss you guys. They're like, wow, rich boy. Like, you're moving, <laughs> moving to Utah. Like, go. I'm like. It's free. Like I was fully recruited there. It's not not free as in like anyone can go. Like you have to be recruited and you have to be like, good enough to play there. So it, it was it was an honor to be on the team. I, I was there for like two and a half years. So I played like a half year on the U16 and then a full year on the U16 uh, team. And then one full year on the U18 team. Amazing experience. Moved to Utah by myself when I was 15 years old. When my sisters were still in high school. They both went to college at NAU, Northern Arizona University. So my whole family, Arizona. Arizona native, but I went to Utah. So I was there, they would come up every four or five months to come visit. It was tough, honestly. 15 years old, moving away was not easy, but it was worth it, you know? Sacrifices, I wanted to go pro, this is a huge stepping stone to get there. The first year in Utah, so it, it was a new program. Lucky enough to be a, one of the first people to play at this Utah facility. So it was a U16 and U18 team, right? So there's probably like 20 to 25 kids on each team because they had a roster and all that stuff. In these dorms, there were 40 to 50 boys, three to a room, got literally just hung out with my best friends all day. We would train, have like six hours of school, train, homework time, hang out with the friends, go to bed, repeat. Literally my life for two and a half years, loved every freaking second of it, loved it so much. That's all I wanted to do. September 1st, junior year, I think is when, correct me if I'm wrong, colleges can start reaching out to you and talking like offers and that day was a very fun day and kind of overwhelming because I didn't realize how many s colleges were interested in me. It was very, it was a bit of an ego, it wasn't humbling because I had a lot of schools reach out to me and it was a huge ego boost, but I, I remained level-headed 
But it, it was very cool seeing all these schools reach out to me, like schools like UCLA, Stanford, Georgetown, Wake Forest, all the best schools in the country, right? After really looking into it, I chose the University of Portland to go there. People, people always told me, they're like, you had such better offers, why'd you go to the University of Portland? I just love like the unity at University of Portland. When I went on my visit, everyone seemed like a family and like Portland, I think is just a beautiful, beautiful city in uh, Oregon. So that's where I ended up going. And then at University of Portland, should have got more playing time, but I mean, it is what it is. I love the team, love everyone there. I mean, unfortunately, I was only there for a semester where I played a season as a freshman, started a good amount of games, worked my ass off, had the season we wanted, the season we should have had, because we were an amazing team and we, we could have won the whole thing. This was all last year, right? So I'd be a sophomore in college right now. So right around this time last year, actually, it's, it's almost been a year, but that's when COVID hit, like mid-March of 2020 was when we were sent home from the University of Portland back just back home while I was back home I was doing online school so my sister Tatum has she's had TikTok. I knew about TikTok because I had the for you page I never like made an account I just had like the app right so I was on the for you page every time I was bored I would just go through it like even in college like I had I think I had TikTok since, since like November one, one of those nights uh, during quarantine Tatum was like I have so many more followers than you do than you do on TikTok. I'm like, Tam, I don't even have an account, so like, don't start with me. Like, I just don't need this right now. And she was like, Yeah, but on Instagram, you only have like a thousand, and she was like, On TikTok, I have like seven thousand. And so she kept teasing. She was kept like rubbing it in my face. That she had more followers. I'm like, Okay, bet. That night, I make two videos on TikTok. It was very cringe. I was like, What am I doing? This looks ridiculous. But I was also low key feeling myself at the same time. So I didn't have a ring light or anything like that, right? I didn't even know what that was at the time. So I used my sister's laptop, turned the brightness all the way up, went into a dark room, and I recorded two TikToks that were like trending at the time. Um, and so I woke up to 10,000 followers. And I was like, and both the videos did like pretty well. Like both of them, like the first night did like 30,000 views, which was like crazy. I went to Tatum, immediately showed her, then just like walked out of the room. Kind of like a mic drop kind of moment. So I was like, ha. And then I kind of got a, like addicted to the whole, like it was, a, it's a good feeling, right? When you, when you post something, you get a lot of likes. Like it's a good feeling. It's like that serotonin that gets released. Like when you get those notifications, right? 9 PM every single night I invested in, well, not invested, I, I bought a ring light because I was like, I'm just, why not? Like, yeah. So I, I bought a ring light, started making these, and it just became fun. Draft them, post them the next day. I'd post probably like three to four every single day. It just kept gaining and gaining, and then all of a sudden, like, it plateaued. And I was like, damn, like, I'm not really popping anymore. So I'm like, eh, well, this is fun. Like, I don't want to distract me from soccer, so I'm just gonna move on, right? And now it's around like May. And I'm really starting the game. I'm at like 50,000 followers. Blake Gray, who is now one of my roommates, who is probably getting sloshed downstairs, he reached out to me when I had 50,000 followers on Instagram. He DM'd me and he had like 3 million followers. And I'm like, how the hell do you even have 3 million followers? Like, that's crazy. And he reached out and was like, yo, bro, I think you have mad potential in the social media space. And I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, I, I couldn't even comprehend. Like, prior to TikTok, the only Social media stuff I did, I posted like game day pics with the boys. I, I didn't know much. So Blake, when he reached out to me, I was like, okay, cool. So I looked at his account. I'm like, damn, this kid's like kind of living a sick life. Like, what does he do? So I looked into him and I saw all that stuff. I'm like, okay, that's really cool. Like, I appreciate that, bro. Like, we'll keep in touch. And he was like, yeah, definitely. Early June, my family decides to go on a little like getaway to Newport Beach. We rented an Airbnb for like five days, right? All the content I made was at my home in Arizona. Now I'm, I've mixed it up, right? Like. These videos aren't a cool, like, we had like a cool blue Airbnb. If you're like an OG, this will like spark a memory that you didn't know you had. Um, Cause it's sparking one right now for me, it's like, damn, I kind of miss that blue beach house, you know? My videos that week were popping. Like every single one was hitting like a mil plus, one hit like 25 million views. And I'm like, that's ridiculous. Like that's more than I've ever done. Like not even by a long shot, like it was bad. So I'm like, okay, this is pretty cool. Like what are people liking? Like wh why is this doing so well, right? Um, and so as that video, as my videos were doing better, my followers are shooting up. I gained like 2.5 million followers in that week. In that week, like that's insane. So I'm at like 3.5, I'm like, okay, so this is like cool. As we're in Newport Beach, Blake texts me again. And he's like, yo, you really need to come out here and meet the Sway Boys. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. Like I used to watch, like I've, I watched Sway, like 
they were always my for you page i'd look at some of their stuff for like inspo i'm like there's no way like i'm looking through their stuff for inspo and he was like, yeah, bro, come meet them. I'm like, say less. Like, I would love to. I told my parents, and they were like, this is kind of insane. Like, we'll look into it. They looked, They did some research on Sway. And uh, they were kind of iffy at the time because th it was just me hanging out with friends that I've never met, kind of. Uh, but they are super supportive, and they allowed it. And they were like, okay, like, go for it. So we took two cars to Newport because my, my sister's boyfriends came as well. So we needed two cars. So my sisters and their boyfriends went to with in one car back to Arizona, and my mom and dad took a detour to LA to drop me off. Amazing parents, by the way. Um, they dropped me off, and they were like, "Okay, well," and I was like, "Don't worry about that. I'll get I'll get a flight back." And they're like, "Okay," like it was just a weird thing. Like this has never happened, and I was like, "I'll get a flight back. Don't worry about that." And they were like, "Okay." They dropped me off, and then. I meet the boys, and it was such a surreal moment. I'm like, what is happening? Like, this is so cool. It was almost like a starstruck moment because I always watched them, and now I'm like in person with them, and it was kind of cool. I'm there, and then I ended up staying like an extra week. I'm like, mom, I'm really having fun. Like, I'm in summer. Like, who cares? And they're like, okay. Uh, so I ended up staying, and then at the end of my time, like, I got to meet everyone at the hype house. Like, it was just such a surreal moment. I'm like, I'm meeting everyone, right? Made some videos with them. People are like, oh, there's no other new Sway Boy, like that kind of stuff. And they're like, some people are like, who is this kid? I started gaining a lot of followers, right? Gained another like 2 million that week. I'm up to like 6, 7 mil. It's like, what is happening? At the end of that time, Bryce pulls me into a room and he's like, yo, you got a spot. If you want it, you want to join Sway? And I'm like, do I? And like, without thinking, I was like, hell yeah. But then I had to really think because, I mean, I'm gonna get serious for a sec. Like, it was the hardest decision I've ever had to make in my life. I was choosing between my dream and passion, being a professional soccer player. That summer, I had trials in June in in Europe. I had like five different trials in like Denmark, England, Germany. Like, I, I was plotting things, like I, I had things going on, right? Like, when COVID hit, travel was banned. Like, flights and stuff like that were canceled. Like, planes, you we weren't allowed to fly. And I was like, well, that kind of sucked, but everything, like, I just think that everything happens for a reason, and I don't know what happened, but that was taken from me, and that sucked. Like, I really wanted to go on trial there, but then this opportunity came, and it was one that I just had to sleep on for weeks and weeks. I finally came to a decision, I talked to my parents, they're so supportive, they talked to me, weighed me through the pros and the cons, and I finally made the decision that I'm like, this is just too good of an opportunity, and like, people think like, oh, you're giving up a D1 and potential pro soccer career to be a TikToker, and it's like, it's not, it's not like that. Like, if you understand anything about TikTok, it's, there's so many opportunities, especially when you come to LA, and like, I wasn't gonna move out to LA without having like a guaranteed plan of being somewhere. Like, having that opportunity to be invited to sway was beyond anything and I finally made the decision and now I'm here living an amazing life and I'm doing really cool things and I don't regret any decision I made everything happens for a reason but I do miss soccer more than anything yeah it was tough but I'm so happy I'm here it's it's truly an amazing experience yes like like any other thing in life it's not all sunshines and rainbows over here being a social media influencer is very, like I have bad days. I have days where I, it, it sucks, but it comes with it, you know? Like I, I'm blessed to be in the position I am, but there's also times where it's just, like as much as I wanna be grateful for everything, and I am beyond grateful. Like I, I don't just think I deserve any, a lot of this stuff. It is frustrating and it's like, I'm now at a spot where I feel like if I try to please everyone, which I try to do before, when I first came on social media, I, I wanted to just put a smile on people's, that's my goal, no matter what I do. And I said, it's still my goal, is to put a smile on anyone's face, is to just make people laugh, smile, and yeah, just make people happy. But at the end of the day, if, you're, if you spend your time trying to make others like you, you're just wasting your time. And like, I, I had to realize that in a hard way. And it sucks because there's always gonna be those people that are gonna hate or that are just gonna talk negatively on you because they're going through their own things. And I try to think of it as like, I don't take a lot of the things that people say about me personally if they don't know me personally, you know? So it's like, if you don't like me through my videos, that's fine. Just, I ask if you can, I wish I could just spend like five minutes with you, you know? Five, 10 minutes, give, give me some time to like, try to get you to like me. But it's not even just that, like I just wanna be myself. And I, and I don't, if I'm, if you're yourself, I don't think like there's no point in trying to be someone else to please someone, you know? And if, if I'm genuinely myself and you still don't like me, that's fine, I'm just not gonna try to ch change myself. That's pretty much that, and I had to learn that the hard way in social media, and 
it sucks, but I'm definitely grateful for where I am and I wouldn't trade it for the world. So that is how I became a social media influencer. I know this might have not have been the most entertaining video, but I just think this isn't very public. I don't think I've really like vented about this stuff on any other platform. So I, it's good to come on here and kind of just talk with you guys about how it all started. I'm excited for what's to come because I have a lot of goals and aspirations. I want to become a movie star, potentially. I need to experience life on set first before I dive right into it. But I would like to get into a movie and see if I really like it, because if I do, then that's what I want to do. But if I don't, in this business, you have to have different plans, unlike with soccer. but. I mean, in soccer you should as well, but not for me. Like, I, I had one thing in mind. I want to model, I want to do all this cool stuff, I want to learn more about the business. It's like, so many opportunities. And I, and I hope that people understand, like, if you watch this full video, I hope you understand, like, what I'm trying to get at. And, like, at the end of the day, like, I did give up a D1 scholarship. I did give up a potential professional career to be a TikToker. But... That being said, it's more than that now. And I'm so happy to be where I'm at and I wouldn't have met the amazing people around me if it wasn't for the decisions I made. So that's my uh, story. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. That's pretty much it. That's the real authentic me. The thing that I put on all my platforms is uh, I try to be authentic and real with you guys. If you guys wanna hear more stories about like things, just let me know because I'm more than happy to just sit down and talk with you. I don't know if this music's really distracting, but like, it's distracting me, but hopefully the mic's not really picking it up too bad. Let me know if you guys want me to sit downs like this. I can even answer questions, whatever you guys want to answer. I'll, I'm happy to give advice. I've gone through and seen a lot, so I'm happy, I'm happy to help and share my input. I'm not saying I can, I have all the answers, not at all, but uh, I'm sure happy to help. So, love you guys, and thank you for listening to my story.